I'm Jess Quinton for IB Times TV, reporting for the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and joining me today is Stephen Guilfoyle of Sarge986.com. Now, it's so good to see you again. It's always a pleasure having you here on the floor. It's been such a crazy week because of the shutdown finally being resolved in this debt ceiling. What did you make of everything that's going on? And it seems as though we might be back in the situation again in a few months. Well, we will be back in the situation in a few months, but I don't think to the same degree. I think we have our stalwarts that will try to raise the same fight. But I think the rest of the Republican Party has probably gotten on board. I don't think anybody wants to do this again. It's just too embarrassing. I think when we get to that point in three or four months, that we will go through it like much easier than we did this time. I think you'll be surprised how fast it goes. It will be like a blip on the radar screen. Now, looking at earnings that came out this week, we finally kickstarted that, especially with the financials. We had J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo last week. Then we finally got Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and then Morgan Stanley today. What did you make of the financials? Because they used to be sort of the star of the show. Do you still think that's the case, or are they kind of struggling now? Well, they're struggling. There are bright spots like Morgan Stanley, but there are weak spots also, which Goldman was for, for a rare occurrence. Uh, I don't think they're the star of the show anymore. I think if you're looking for a star of the show, it's kind of weird, but you're going to go into, even though we're at the top of the chart, you're going to go into the defensive sectors, the utilities, the REITs, those kind of plays, dividend plays, because they lagged the market as we were rising the last few weeks, okay? With interest rates being somewhat suspect with what was going on with our fiscal policy and with this September non-taper, these areas that were interest rate reliant did not perform with the rest of the market, and now they're catching up. So I think over the next week to three weeks, you're going to see areas that don't usually lead the market lead the market, and that's propelling us into uncharted waters here with the S&P 500. Now, looking ahead towards next week, we are going to get big companies like Netflix, Microsoft, Caterpillar, and some others. When we do look at these earnings reports, what is it that we really should be focusing on with these companies? Well, the interesting thing is the revenue side of the equation, okay? I don't chart every stock, but I chart a lot of stocks. And about 60% of the stocks I chart are missing on their revenue projections. Most of them are beating their earnings per share projections, but most of them are missing on the revenue side, which means to me that when you lay off a lot of people and within a few years you haven't really hired a lot of them back, that it becomes easier and easier to beat lowered expectations on earnings per share. But they're not really making more money, otherwise the revenue side would be higher. So corporate performance is less of a barometer of how the stock market's going to do than it ever was before. The stock market is now much more reliant on a messy fiscal policy, which requires a loose monetary policy, which creates low interest rates so that the Treasury can borrow cheaply and we all have liquidity. Now, when we do look at these earnings performance, whether or not these companies do beat expectations, is it as if they're almost lowering the expectations? So, yeah, sure, they do beat, but is it really that great of a performance that they're doing? No, it's not a great performance, and they've been doing that for years now. Every quarter, a lot of them, they try to manage down their earnings per share expectations so that they can get that pop on earnings day, but it's not really working the way it used to. I think you're seeing on a case-by-case -case basis, certain stocks, yeah, they still have a good day or they still get punished on earnings day, but the, the pop they used to get by falsely lowering their expectations, that's not really what it used to be. Then you have the uh, obvious exceptions every once in a while like we had today with Google. <laughs> <laughs> and when we do look at companies, say with Caterpillar next week, and then we're also getting Apple in a couple of weeks, they did show signs that they were struggling in China. What do you think is going on there? And do you think we're still going to see some of that when they do have their earnings reports come out that they're struggling in that region? Yeah, well, China just came out with a pretty positive third quarter GDP of 7.8%, but they admitted that 55% of that was their own infrastructure that they were spending money on. We also had lower numbers for industrial production and retail sales than we had in August. And we also earlier in the week had weak numbers for exports and a surprisingly high CPI number. So consumer level inflation is rearing its ugly head in China. Also runaway housing. So everything's not okay in China. And with these prices rising the way they are, the PBOC probably has to sit on their hands. So I don't know how positive you want to be going into the fourth quarter and the first quarter in China. Although we, they still have gaudy numbers we all would love to have, they're probably going to shrink somewhat. And the government told you that today. They, they're looking for 7. Point, I think 2% in the fourth quarter and 7.8% even for 2014. And finally, because of the shutdown, we had so much different economic data that was delayed. We are finally going to get that September jobs report, but I've talked to you so many different times about jobs data, and you say, you know, you don't even pay attention to any of that anymore. Now, we are finally going to get it on Tuesday, along with another other things, but, you know, when we get all of this, what should we really be focusing on? Because this is old data. 
Right. Yeah, in fact, don't pay attention to it. <laughs> Tuesday's jobs number won't mean a thing. It's for September, it's old news. And then on November 8th, when you get October's job number, don't pay attention to that either, because that's going to have all the furloughed employees in it. So the next job day that matters, that you really have to focus on if you're a trader or an investor or an economist, is December 6th. That's when we get November's job data, and that will be the next jobs data that really matters. Anything otherwise will just be a knee-jerk reaction to data that doesn't matter. Well, as always, Stephen, it's so great to have you on the program. That's economist Stephen Gilfoyle, and I'm Jessica Minton for Times TV.